Let's move on to mixed martial arts. But before we do that, do we really want to do that on an MMA video? Yeah, man. They don't tailgate. Yeah, they will. They don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Well, they can tailgate this mug outside of one of those arenas when they're watching the MMA video. So when you guys get your PJs on and you roll around on the mat with those little belts on that you fucking high in such whole regard, and you don't have a sound system or stereo system in your gym, yeah. You have one right here. Boombox, solar powered, Bluetooth enabled, eight speakers, awesome machine, and guess what? It's from Eton Corp. It's powered by the sun, so you don't ever need to and worry about a cord. you're probably trying to think, why are these two idiots showing me this? How do I get one? Two ways. First, you leave us a video comment, no more than 15 seconds. Yes. About what would you do with your Eton solar powered ruckus XL. If you had one. If you had one. Now, at the end of the month, Kevin and I will review the videos. We'll review them as they come out. You can have more than one submission. That's mm -hmm. fine. That's it. And then we'll decide which one of you monkeys wins it. Yes. Now, it is valued at $200. So, it is a nice system. But um, that's one way they can win it. That's one the way. other way. The other way you guys can win it, or monkeyish, my companion George would say, is uh, you, first of all, the Eton Corporation who is sponsoring this, has been kind enough to have a contest that they kicked off Labor Day weekend. And what you have to do is you have to tweet at Eton Corporation your best tailgating photo. Okay? So for you guys, you MMA guys, get your PJs on, get your belts on, roll around all sweaty on the mat and get somebody to take a picture. That's right. your version of a tailgate. That's your version of a tailgate. Whatever. You know, your pre-gaming party or whatever it is, you're going to tailgate that picture to at Eton Corporation and you have to put the hashtag Eton tailgates. Now, I helped the football folks out in the football video with what I would do. Here's mm -hmm. what I would do if I were you, monkey. Please tell them, George. Well, let's <gasps> see. I'm assuming you guys have friends. Yeah. So call them. Bring them over. Get your snacks. And, snacks. Yeah, snacks. Mm -hmm. And take a picture of your, your UFC parties. Maybe right. you guys do that. That's what I would do. Yeah. Um, the t I like the tailgating party idea I had earlier better, yeah. but the, I mean, I don't... really I don't, talking about tails. That's yeah. why. You know? I'm not sure. I mean, how do you... We don't... I don't... But, but I think it's this way. Tailgating, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't necessarily have to be a football game. Obviously, they always promote the contest during football season. But if you're tailgating any event, if you're out partying, getting ready to get your drink on or whatever, if you're listening to music, whatever you might be doing, if you're pre-gaming, you could have use of this Eton Ruckus XL. And you know what? They're giving away one free. We're giving away one free. Get your butts over to Eton Corporation. Hell, Check you might the win contest. them both. Yes. I doubt it, but you could try. Yes. Now, the link to the, uh, in case we didn't make ourselves clear, I'm going to put the link to the, uh, the contest page below in the description box so you can check it out there. Now, on to MMA. Um, we're going to start with a little bit of MMA news. Little. Just a little. Little. Um, GSP is slated to fight Hendricks, Johnny Hendricks. I that, know that. that fight is still on. Mm -hmm, it um, is. it's GSP's one fight this year. But so George! Yes. Please tell me something that you find very interesting and possibly. This is where shit gets weird. So G GSP came out and said that he wanted to pay for VADA testing for himself and Johnny Hendricks. For you folks who don't are... No uh, VADA testing? Or no just VADA. VADA. <laughs> Voluntary Anti-Doping Association. For his okay. So that's the... It's some kind of high-end, high-tech, revolutionary drug testing. Right. Johnny Hendricks found out that VADA's actually footing the bill for GSP's testing, which is completely contradictory to what GSP said. Because GSP said he was going to fund this shit. Now these people are saying, hey, you know what? Come take our drug tests. We'll we'll pay for it and do everything for you, GSP. Just take our no, drug just, tests. No, we'll just sit, sit tight. Think about that for a second. Okay. Okay. Do you understand why that might be a little bit fishy? Kind of. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why it would be a little bit fishy. I understand why shit could be a lot of bit fishy. So, is anyone else upset that Johnny Hendricks doesn't want to do this? Are, you, are, are there people out there that are actually pissed off about Johnny Hendricks? I don't know, but I'm mean, because I'm not. I'm, I, I'm right with him on it. Johnny Hendricks just, is fine. He's like, fine, I'll be drug tested, but, but he's like, I'm that. not doing that one. No, he's like, he's like, I'm not going to that company. No, so. It, it would be interesting. I, look, it's at still this point in time, I would probably say, you know what, Dana, you know what, let's just do it the way we've normally done it. And, you know, everybody pisses and takes the thing. Just, they should just do pee, urine, and blood tests. 
you know, so, doing before the event. But Hendricks is going to get tested. He's just doing the NSA, NSAC testing, which is, I'm pretty sure, is the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Why don't they just do Olympic testing? Uh, why would you do that? Who's going to pay for it? That's that's what it boils down to. Who's going to pay for it? That's the big know. thing. The, the big hurdles are drug testing, supposedly, in the UFC, which I, I don't see. They do this shit with Olympic athletes, mm-hmm. and these monkeys are all around the world. Oh, so yeah. somehow they pull that shit off. Right. Call me crazy. But, yeah. yeah but somehow they can't figure out how to do it in the UFC. Yeah. They All they need to do is figure out, A, which test to take, and B, who's going to pay for it. Those are the two big issues. They can't figure that shit out. Blows me away. Multi-million dollar company, top of it. Yeah. I, I don't know. It just... For us... I, I, think, I think you're going to get... Until you had the IOC type testing, because everybody knows that stuff has nailed several people, and obviously the way they do it, the protocol, yeah, it continues to do it, and they do it bat, 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 right before, right after events. Until you put that in play, there's always going to be question marks, there's always going to be eyebrows being raised. So just you know what, Dane, if you guys don't want to, I mean, because every time now that we cover event, and, and what does it even matter, George? Because you know what, some people are going to get TUEs and stuff like that. So it's like it's so like this. It's so fun. It's and, just and crazy. And for people who I, I don't know what you were like as a little kid. I, I have no idea. I was idea. a fucking demon. I know when I was a little kid, I looked up to these athletes and thought, and wow, it would windows. be cool that I could do that one day. And then as you become an adult, you're like, shit, what if I just took drugs? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to find an athlete that you can fucking stand behind because did they take drugs? Did they not take drugs? Did they get an exemption to take drugs? And it's not just, yeah. just, MMA. Trust me, there's problems in football, there's problems in baseball, there's pro- In all mainstream only, sports, yeah. It, well, we haven't seen anyone in basketball yet get busted. They no. get busted for weed all the time. Yeah. Ask J.R. Smith. He just got busted for he just got sitting a five on five-game suspension, game suspension right. for a banned substance. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if they have to disclose to what substance is, but you have, we haven't heard any performance-enhancing drugs yet in basketball. No, they they haven't. I mean, I, I think their bodies don't or break golf. down as much. Mm. El- well, no, golf. There was a guy last year that got busted. Oh, I think mm-hmm. Tigers just missed the ball. Yeah, he, he had to back off his stuff. Anyway. Um, For all of us UFC fans, we had a treat in the middle of last week. Yes, we did. We got to see Glover Teixeira fight Ryan Bader. And, and I, that was, I believe, UFC Fight Night 28 or something. Sure. It was on a Wednesday. Yes. To, yeah, it was. Uh, we'd have to go back on that event. But anyway, it was on a Wednesday. And, and you know what? The fight was held in Brazil. There were a lot of Brazil. Brazilians, uh, Brazil. There were a lot of Brazilians on the undercard. George and I told you guys straight up, hey, we don't know a lot of these guys' names, and we don't know a lot of their history because they're obviously Brazilian, and and you know, rightfully so. Now we do know that Joseph, there were, Joseph Benavidez can win fights as long as it's not for the belt. It, it, he's good, and he put it on Hussie Formiga, and he he just he's good. He is good. that guy. He's a winner. He's fucking awesome. He gets it done. I tell you what, he doesn't have too many defeats. No, if the belt's not on the line, he's pretty unstoppable. And it looks like he won by TKO. Right with a knee to the body. Right, we do and get it done. That guy round one. It. But he didn't get a fucking bonus. That's all right. Next That's time. That's a bunch of bullshit. Man, but anyway, just a little guy he got overlooked. Benavidez got the win again. And we knew he would. We said he would because George and I are brilliant MMA. <laughs> and one of us is more so than the other. Hey, I, say Kevin's no, got something to No, don't even say, because see, I, you know what? You're going to yourself? No, I'm going to, first of all, because the trolls, well, they only come out when we get shit wrong, you know? Meanwhile, everybody gets shit wrong. It's just, no, but no. when Kevin gets two 11 fights straight, I haven't got a fight wrong. No one says, hey, Kevin, you know what? Maybe you have a little bit of MMA knowledge or luck. Don't. Just I, I don't even need the knowledge. Just tell me I have MMA luck. But you know what, haters? George and I both read an article about haters, right? Yes, we did. It was very interesting. I wanted to post that shit on my Facebook, but I figured it'd be too complicated for somebody. So George and I said, "Fuck, we'll just talk to the trolls and the haters and all the fucking butt nuggets out there that live in your mother's basement." It. It, it's the bottom line. It's, it's this. It's a disease. It's a disease. Seriously, it is. It's a mental disorder. It's a mental disorder because they did a test. Yep. And they used. Test. A test on people that hate. Mm-hmm. And they, they used all these products. Fake products. Fake products that didn't exist. Yep. And they were like, hey, uh, have you tried that? Have you, what do you think about that modulator 694 phone, which is a fictitious product? And people who were haters would say, oh, it's a piece of shit. I had it before and I took it right back. Or my friend has it and, oh, he sucks. He hates it. No, and damn sight well, they've never even seen it. Never seen the phone. Because it's not real. Doesn't exist, but they still hate it on it. So haters, it's okay. You're broken and you can't be fixed. So hate, first of all, guys, all you haters out there, you got a hall pass. We understand you have a disease, so you can hate on our videos. And then after that, you can proceed to get on these nuts.
We're out. Next fight. Jacare Sousa has stand up. And he stood up and flattened Okami yes. with a nasty overhand, right? Um, this guy is He's going nasty, to be man. a fucking problem in middleweight. He really is, man. And, you know, besides for that bump in the road, that little hiccup he had with Luke Rockhold back over in Strike Force, he's just looked incredible. Dude, he's looked when like your peers tell you that you have the best at whatever, your yes. peers, the people you participate with, because let me tell you right now, I tell Kevin how great he is. He tells me how great I am. That's how we time. know we're so great. That's how we know we're this. awesome. Yeah. But when they say Josh George, Grace, you're great at this, yeah, man. You know what? I, I try, but I'm not nearly as good as you are. <laughs> I don't know, man. You've been pretty good. Uh, I, well, you know what? Keep it up, man. You'll be... <laughs> anyway, Jacare Sousa's... Um, Sousa. Sousa. I'm spitting on the monitor. Yeah, no oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Well, at least it's, it's clean now. Lips. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not high. Not so. like Eminem. No. Um, wow. his, his cohorts, his counterparts... His <laughs> compadres say he's got the best BJJ in all of his the His homies, not right, yes, they do. So, and now he's got a little bit of stand-up to go along with it, and... I, I'm going to tell you something, man, and I, I don't believe I'm saying this because I... George knows I'm a huge Anderson Silva fan. As am I. But I tell you, man, like, you know, as every year as Anderson gets older, and, and George and I, are, even though we're fans of MMA, we, you start to really look at things. Like, you looked at Weidman, you looked at his struggles with Chell Sonnen, and... Um, and you, you still look at what Anderson Silva is capable of, but then when I look at someone like Jacare, who destroyed Yushin Okami, and it was not that easy for Anderson Silva. I mean, he beat Yushin, Yushin Okami, but Jacare handled him like he was a child. I'm serious. And it's like, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm damn serious. And you guys, and you guys need to know that when I say this, I'm serious. And you guys need to agree with me because I'm an MMA analyst legend. <laughs> Do you think I overdid it right there? Because I don't think I overdid it. I mean, I think most of the people agree with me that I know everything. Is it a little bit I overdid it? I'm sorry. Just a dad. I'm sorry. Anyway, let's move on to the next fight. <laughs> Call yourself a legend. Glover Texchera fought Ryan. <gasps> I think I'm Darth Vader, Vader, whatever. I, let me tell you something. <laughs> now, the first thing I got from this fight was Texchera. He was pissed at himself because he said, this guy caught me. Now, he didn't finish him, but Ryan Bader was like, and Chuck Sierra kind of fell back, and then oh, yeah. he fell back. Him. He flattened him, and, and he you could see he was very upset at the end of the fight. But the thing about this guy is so good. He's got a fucking iron jaw, and he fell back against the fence, and he kind of got focused. And as soon he as got Bader... got up off the mat, dog. Yeah, he got up off the mat, then up against the fence when yeah. Bader came at him again. And two-piece the fuck out of him. It was crazy, <laughs> because he was like, shit, he caught me. And then he's like, I gotta end this shit. And Bader threw these looping punches, created the openings, and was like, ping pop. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Glover's hands are nasty. I'm sorry. Glover's hands are nasty. Glover, Glover. You know, but uh, Glover, don't be upset at yourself. Okay. Because I'm going to tell you what, anybody who fights him, you better put him away. Well, so if you hit him, the thing throw I a cinder block at him. The thing I afterwards. like is this is a guy who takes chances. This is a guy who goes out and tries to end fights. This yeah. is a guy who put himself in harm's way, got caught with a punch, came back and still won the fight. And a c credit to Bader for pushing forward. Yeah. Because he easily could have backed off and tried to look for an opening, but he pressed and tried to end the fight. And that's what we're looking for. That's what people want to see, man. People don't want to see these. I mean, obviously, a methodical fighter is great, too. But, man, I, I got, like you said, George, I got to give it to Ryan Bader because he went out there to fight. And, hey. He could keep his job. He's going to keep his just job. Just leave it light heavy. He can be just uh, an also ran. But Dana White says, with this knockout victory over Bader, Glover has locked up. His next fight will be the against the... the winner of the next event we're going to talk about. Now, the next event that we're going to be talking about, obviously, is... UFC 165. George, can you tell the people a little bit about this UFC? It's in Canada, mm -hmm. and on paper, this thing blows goats. <laughs> not even, I'm not even fucking kidding. I'm yeah. this not... I'm seriously... Name, not. On name power He's alone, not. Not, not strong. No. Um, I think the only other fight that I personally am mm -hmm. looking forward to mm -hmm. is the beef at heavyweight between Brendan Schaub and Matt Mitrione that got sparked off on Twitter. That's absolutely hilarious to read. It is. Um, but to be honest, to be honest, to be honest, that's about it. Right. I understand Hendon Burrell is yeah. fighting Eddie Wineland for the interim bantamweight title. Mm -hmm. 
and Is browse it. Or Winland? Whatever. Wineland. <laughs> But those two, they're going to fight for an interim belt. Right. Barrow's entertaining to watch. Yeah. But, I mean, we're all tuning in to watch John Jones. We really are tuning in to watch John Jones. I mean, we'll, we'll start out and we're going to go through the, the fights quickly, guys. There's a lightweight bout between Pat Healy and Khabib, Habib. I'm pretty sure it's Habib. I think the case. I Norma go made off. Yeah. He's undefeated. I think He's Pat undefeated. Healy is going to have his fucking hands full. Now, don't get me wrong. Pat Healy is definitely, as Kevin would say, a formidable opponent. A formidable opponent. He is, he's really good. And, but, but, you know, this guy has, uh, not Healy, but his opponent has been on a roll, man. His last fight, he looked very impressive. And well, I mean, I think but, the biggest issue right now with Habib is going to be the scale. Cause his yeah. last fight had to be fought, uh, catch it's weight. like a catch weight. Cause yeah, he couldn't cause make he weight. weight by mm-hmm. half a pound, dude. Mm-hmm. That's, Considerably off, consider that I think they gave you one to two in non title fights. Yeah, and he's gotta be, yeah, he's gotta be down to 54. So. But Pat Healy's, Pat Healy's 6 0 and 1 in his last seven fights. He had a no contest against Jim Miller. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he tested positive for marijuana. Pat Healy? Yeah. Uh, now here's an interesting question. Since this fight's in Toronto, and, and Canada has different. Grim, make a joke. Oh, oh, sorry. And Toronto has different laws on marijuana than the United States. Does I wonder how the Athletic Commission handles that. Does the Canadian Athletic Commission look at weed different than the American Athletic Commission? I'm not sure. I mean, that's a legitimate question. That is a legitimate question. Well, I mean, maybe one of you guys could do it. Maybe one of you guys could do a real funny video response and you could win the Ruckus that? XL. Huh? What's that? Oh, really quickly before we move on the fight. This is the Eton Corporation's Ruckus XL. Real quickly, guys. Two ways to win it. We're for tailgating. Solar powered, Bluetooth enabled, eight speaker boom box. It is great. Use it with your iPhone, your iPad, play your music right on it. When you walk into the room, we're giving away one free $200. Create, create a 15 second or less video response posted on any of our videos. Kevin and I will be the judge of that. Mm-hmm. Um, about what you would do with your Eton, E-T-O-N, Ruckus XL. Yep. And then we, at the end of the month, will decide which one of you monkeys wins it. And we will ship you one. So a $200 value. Now, if your Twitter, Mm-hmm. Or if you have a Twitter handle, mm-hmm. or if you don't have a Twitter handle, make one up. Why? Why? Because the Eton Corporation has been cool enough to say, not only are Jordan and Kevin giving one way, but we're going to do a contest where if you tweet us at Eton Corporation, that's the Twitter handle. So you tweet them, not us. You not tweet them. at Eton Corp. And you tweet them a picture of your best tailgating photo, and you put the hashtag Eton Tailgates. They're going to determine who has the best tailgating photo and they're going to send you one as and well that enters you into their drawing so technically you got more than you know you got a fair amount of chances to yeah. win one so get on it people now yeah. back to the fights now next fight um oh and, and fight number one if pat healy can can stay off the pot i'm picking pat healy for the win i understand habib hasn't lost he's undefeated he's 20 and 0 and i understand he's russian and he's nasty um i'm just gonna go with pat healy yeah i'm, I'm gonna go with uh pick habib gonna... you have to you can't, we can't pick the, what, you know what, let me, my I bad. wanted to go with Pat Healy with Bubba Kush Choke, man. You, you pick and then I'm going to dick ride you. Um, what, for, <laughs> <laughs> dick ride his pick. I just want to see how many of you have come up with that. Anyway, okay. for One people who don't know, this guy, mm-hmm. he hasn't missed a fight in two events. I know. It makes him 11 and 0. So who are you taking in the lightweight between Pat Healy and Habib? I'm going to take Habib. I'm going to take Pat Healy. Yeah. Now, on to Costa Fill My Poo versus Fill My Poo. Francis Carmon. He is fighting Francis Carmon. I'm going right away. I'm going to go with Costa Fill Poo. Really? In the middle way down. Just yeah. right off the no. Ex- I'm, I'm, I'm not going to even go. I, I just think, uh, just, I mean, you can go check his record, but I just think he's been impressive lately. Uh, you know, he had a little couple bumps in the roads, but I just think he's, I, I just think he's going to get this fight. I, I don't know. I can't give anybody a, Crazy explanation why. Five and zero in his last fight. Yeah, I mean, he just, I, he's just been very consistent. He's been getting the job done. He's not been anything that's been seven like, and one in his last eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, last... what about Francis Carmont? Um... Francis Carmont is that French? One, two, three, four, five, six. He's on a roll too, right? Six, ten. He's ten. ten. Now, but tell me, do you know any of the people he's beat? Tom Lawler. Tom, yeah, he's pretty. Chris, Com- Chris Camozzi. Camozzi's good too. Chris Camozzi's good, and who? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with Costa Filippo. He beat Lorenz and Larkin. Mm-hmm. And Tom Lawler. He's the decision master. I don't know. Yeah. There's some submissions. Yeah. Um. You know what? Just to be different, I'm going with Mr. Comon. Okay. Now, 
This is the fight that if there's a second Twitter fight, that beef, we're really son. It's Twitter beef like <gasps> crazy, man. See, they need to start beeping with each other and need to, see, need to send something to the Eton Corporation. If I can stop getting these marbles out of them. Oh my God. Am I turning off my mic? Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, George and I are excited about this fight because these two have been on a fucking roll with each other, man. They just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, mad shit talking, whatever, whatever. And one of them's going to lose, and one of them's going to look like a fucking complete fucking idiot. Yeah. And then back up their shit talking that they did on Twitter. And we're talking Brendan Schwab and Matt Mitrion. Yeah, and I think Brendan Schwab has a lot to prove. I mean, this could be for... I mean, he doesn't have a lot of losses in the UFC. I mean, he is 9-3 and three with all... Um, His last five fights, he's what, 2-3, and three, though? Yeah, he's not, not super strong. Yeah. He's, he's got two... He had back-to-back L's, but they reversed Rockwell and uh, Rodrigo, uh, Big Nog. Yeah. So... He's two. He is. He is. He is one in three in his last three fights. But you know what? I have never been a huge fan of Matt Mitrione. I'm no, just I mean, not. Even when he was in the house, you you struggle with him. Yeah, I just. And you know, he started off hot. He went five and zero in the UFC, mm-hmm. um, and then he lost to Chech Congo. He lost to Roy Nelson, mm-hmm. and he 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 knocked out Phil DeFries Phil DeFries yeah. in the first round when they fought in Sweden. Um, I don't. I don't know. I, I think. I think it's going to be an exciting match. I think these two guys are going to stand up and throw bombs. Who do you um, have? Matt. Matt, Matt Mitrione. Mitri- yeah, yeah. I, I. I do too. I think I, he's got I, a better chin and he's got better hands than Brendan. Trump. Yeah. He. He sometimes Matt Mitrione. I think they, what throws him off is sometimes he just seems so out of it. Like. Yeah. Like disinterested. Like disinterested. Like. And if you get the Matt Mitrione that's interested in whatever, he's a good fighter. But then sometimes he's just like, you're like, where's fucking, his head is like Eminem's was today during the Michigan fucking Notre Dame game. I'm like, Wowzers. wow, who put him on national TV? For you like guys that? who haven't seen it, head over to Deadspin. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, um, his head is just not in it sometimes. So I'm going to go with Matt Mitrione because I feel like if the fighter shows up, he will beat Shab. If the fighter doesn't show up, then Shab might get another W. Now, Moving on to the Bantamweight Interim oh. Championship between Hanan Baral and Eddie Winlin or Wineland. You want to take a stab at the last. Hanan Baral is, is 30 and 1. Mm-hmm. You want to take a stab at what year his loss was in? It was like 03, wasn't it? 05. Yeah, it was a long Holy time ago. Holy shit. I'm telling you, a lot of people feel like this guy, they're like, okay, what's up with Dominic Cruz? Like, I mean, they're like, I, I, I understand. This is the thing. Dominic Cruz has not lost the belt, okay? But at no, some point, he lost po- the ACL though. He lost the ACL, but at some point, you gotta. If you can't defend that belt anymore, you just can't. You're. I just think this is how I've always felt. Like, if health is part of the game, the fight game. Yeah. And I'm a fan. I'm a fan of uh of Dominic Cruz. I hope he can keep keep the belt. But the problem is, is that I don't feel like. I think he should just be in limbo and get the first shot back when he comes back. And I feel like you have to forfeit the belt. These other guys fight, train their asses off, and they never can be a real champion because this other guy's just sitting around for two years hurt and injured. Dude, I agree. I, I just, I just, I just don't, I don't agree with that. I never have agreed with that. And it's, it takes nothing away from the fighters that are in that position because I feel bad for Dominic Cruz and I hope he gets healthy and he's able to fight and I hope he can defend his belt. But I feel like if you cannot fight and defend your belt, then you shouldn't have the belt. And and sometimes it's a bad, you know, some people when they fight, they get hurt. In the middle, he could go out and try to defend his belt and fucking break his hand in the first round and 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 lose that way. Well, you know what? That happens. Shit happens when you fight and you lose the belt. Well, shit happened to him in the offseason, so he should lose the fucking belt. That's the way I feel about it. I just think that, and I think right now, I think Henan Burrell could probably beat him. Yeah, and, and the one thing I... I don't think either any of us have really paid too too much attention to. I mean, Kevin and I did shoot a video on it. Mm-hmm. Um, when Dominic Cruz comes back, mm-hmm. when he's ready to fight, this will be his first fight not under Lloyd Irvin. Yeah. Which. You know what? I, which, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not a, 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 I'm not a, we're not a camp or, expert. We yeah. don't know where these guys are training. We don't know how to get at. I mean, look, I, to be honest, I don't give a fuck where they train. Yeah. Uh, they train, they train all over the place. They go all over the place. Yeah. But when you've been with one guy for so long, 
and then you have to change that, and you have to find somebody who then compliments you, maybe gets you out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part of the thing that's also taken Dominic so long to come back. Yeah. Because he hasn't found a place comfortable enough to train. Well, between injuries and all kinds of fucking, you know, scandals and shit, the camp you train out, it's just, it's been hard for the guy, I mean, you know? because when you're guarding your butthole with one hand, and you're flying around on your toes on the other two feet, I mean, you gotta, it keeps you, I don't think there's many camps run like that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Too soon? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you are one of the greatest MMA analyst legends to live. You know, sometimes I think if I really play my cards right, I'll be at your level, George. <laughs> you don't ever <laughs> want to do that. I'll be at your level. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, it, it's you know. I think you, that's I think that's playing a part I, in I why we haven't right. seen Dominic Cruz back. Yeah, I agree. I think he's looking for a camp. I mean, I you know what? I could be wrong. Maybe he's found a camp. But when I just Googled his name and Lloyd Irvin, I didn't mm -hmm. say anything about a new camp. All that came up is an article back in March, not right. that long ago, about how he split. Right. But yeah. with that said, Hennon Burrell is going to win this fight. I agree with him. Yeah. I don't think anything is going to be close. I think he's going to dominate uh, dominate Eddie. I don't think Eddie stands a yeah. shot. Hennon Burrell is the real deal. I think he's... Uh, fuck the interim title. Just give him... When he beats give him the, the shit title, out of the city, give him the belt. It. He's the champ. And yeah. tell Dominic Cruz that good luck. Yeah, when he comes back and he's ready to fight, he can fight. Bring get your, the first shot. Yeah. For bring the title. your dusty ass knees in the ring. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I would blow your kneecaps off. Yeah. Um... Now, on to the main event fight, which is the light heavyweight championship between John Jones and Alex Danzer Gustafsson. Um, everybody's making a big hype because for the first, first time, John Jones will be fighting John a man. John Jones is fighting somebody his size. His <gasps> size, big and lengthy and yeah, stuff like that. The this. UFC is basically promoting this. Here's a tall guy. Here's a tall guy. They're going to fight. Yeah. Um, the one thing they got to realize is that John Jones, and I think when you... You know, they are both tall strikers and they, they're great. And Gustafsson can keep it, use his range and, and tag you and stuff like this. But John Jones, a lot of people forget how fucking good of a wrestler he is, man. He is a fucking strong Ooh. motherfucker and a great wrestler. And if he takes, and you know, if they, they just play, play, go the conservative route and say, okay, take Gustafsson to the ground, I don't think there's much that Gustafsson can do. Well, here's, well, he starts raining his here's, fucking here's, pointy ass elbows. Here's now. what I want to. Those motherfuckers are like daggers. You folks are out there probably trying to figure out how did Gustafsson get this title shot? Well, he's only lost one fight, and he's gone. He's on a six fight win streak. Mm -hmm. But let me just go over some names. He's uh he's beaten. He just beat Shogun. He beat Tiago Silva. He mm -hmm. beat Vladimir Matashenko. Mm -hmm. He beat James Tahuna, and he beat Cyril Diabetes. But he the ones, the one diabetes. Yeah, diabetes. Yeah, him. Too. He beat the beaties. The one person he beat cancer too. who's holding a win uh -huh. over John Jones, the only blemish on John Jones' record is not on Gustafsson's record because Gustafsson beat the best light heavyweight to ever fight. The only man to hold a win over John Jones. Matt Hamill. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Huh? He, he, what? Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to read your lip. <sighs> oh, God. I hope you all understand that. I'm, I'm not co-signing this. I'm endorsing Alexander and Gustafsson for the win. <laughs> nah, Gustafsson, in my opinion, has got no shot at this. I think, I wanna, John, I think John. I'm Jones. taking. Are you taking the over and under? Fi okay, I got the 15 comments. George, you're an asshole for imitating Mark Mike Mark Hamill like that. I'm going under 15 comments this time. Oh, it'll be over. You think we do? No, because there'll be a lot of new people who have never seen me make fun of Matt Hamill. Right. And God forbid somebody make fun of someone for being deaf. People oh. don't realize that Matt Hamill came on the show and made fun of George one time. You guys didn't obviously see that show, right? I didn't see that one either. Anyway, yeah, me to me. Uh, I got John Jones winning this in the fourth. I don't, I think it's going to take him a little bit. To fill um, him out. I could even see him going him the up. distance because I don't think John Jones is going to be, I, it just, it depends. It depends how John Jones wants to do this, but I see this being ended in the fourth round. I think John Jones is going to TKO him in the third. Third, huh? I think he's yeah. going to take him to the ground. Sometimes it's going to, at some point. Or he's going to open Gustafsson up. Yeah, he's going to. John a, Jones quite often opens his opponent up because, just like Kevin said, he gets you in those positions and throws those fucking Gensus. He's like, <laughs> he just fucking just carves him up. Yeah, and he just does that shit. I think he's going to get him to the ground. He's going to use this advantage on the ground and he's going to throw down elbows and going to hit him with ground and pound. Now, what will be interesting is when they get tangled up because there will be a. a I guess what is it? What they what's it called in wrestling when you 
Hmm? Uh, collar, that when they tie up. Yeah, tied up. Mm-hmm. When they tie up, it'll be interesting because everyone we've seen up to this point who fights John Jones goes, wow, he's really strong. Now, right. here's a guy just as the same height, so I wonder if he will be able to use his leverage where, you know, if you're taller than a, your opponent, you can use more leverage, which yeah. might come across as strength. Yeah. So now you're going up against a guy that you might not be able to use your leverage with because you guys are going to be on the same, you know, same height scale. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. It, 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 what's interesting too is what people don't realize is, is that when you look at somebody that is your height, I mean, two inches taller than you, but they weigh the same, then they're the thinner, more wiry guy. They might not be as strong. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you don't think of it like that, you know? I mean, it's, you know, how strong is the guy that's going this fucking tall and he weighs this amount? You know, you start See, getting folks, linky. That right there, that's what makes him. An M M M M M M M M M M M M A legend. Legend in the analyst in the analyst field. That that right there. That type of insight. You guys can only just. It's hard. It's 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 truly trust. I mean, you really can't find it anywhere else on the internet. I'm just. I don't mean to toot my horn, but you know, I'll toot it. Go ahead, toot it. You guys can toot it too if you like. You can toot it behind the, on the damn comment board right here. Oh, and monkeys, go make your Eton video. Yeah, go do that shit, man. 15 seconds of pure fucking craziness. 16 seconds, I don't give a shit. It could be the funniest 17 thing ever. 17 is super rap. funny, yeah. You know what? Do it. Eton Corporation's giving them away. Take advantage of it. I don't want to see long videos because I'm not watching them. Deuces. Rabbit ears to the two invisible people sitting on each side of me. Figure that one out. I'm out. I'm out of here. <laughs>